to that of the future. Good morning. It is a wonderful, wonderful morning. It's so good to see each one of you here today. Just, uh, just a reminder, heads up, we're having a baptism immediately after, uh, well, after I get done. And so you can feel free to, to leave if you need to at that point. I'll have a prayer at the end of, of the message today or just hang around and uh, participate in that. It won't be long. We would love to have you be part of it. And if you're really hot, you may want to invite, you may want to ask for a, a baptism. We'll get, we, we can at least get you cooled off. Um, and, and, but it should be way more meaningful to you than that. So great to have you here today. It really is wonderful to be a, a part of this day. If, uh, thanks to all of those of you who are watching us online, and most of you are from around this area as well. And it's really kind of good to have our country back a little bit, isn't it? Wow, it's nice. I live out toward the tower, and uh, it's nice to be able to use the road again. And, uh, you know, Crook County has three traffic light total, and they operate a week and a half out of the year. And it's nice to see them wrapped up in plastic again and back where they belong. I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. Speaking of which, you, you, you know why they don't let pigs drive? they would hog the road. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll cowboy it up a little more than, than that. That's just a former joke. Uh, uh, you, you know why the pony needed water? He was a little horse. <laughs> hey, we're, we're going we're, we're gonna to get into Scripture right now. And you would know this. All scripture, the Bible says, teaches us, and we believe, all scripture is God inspired, literally God breathed. So God, it said, breathed through holy men of old, and they wrote for us his scripture. So their personalities are shaped. He's an incarnational God, he speaks through us, but this is God's word, and God breathed it. And all scripture is useful and good for. for instruction, correction, all, all of that. But there are certain verses that are just premium. For instance, many of us know John 3.16. Uh, if you've ever watched a sporting event, you've seen that one. Uh, For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's, that's premium. And, and all scripture, we're gonna, we're gonna look at one of those today we're going to go to the book of Romans and chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. And this is one of the significant passages in all of Scripture. It's a pivotal turning point in all of Scripture. And, and some of you, I think, have been there, done that, are doing that, what's there, and maybe have not had the language for it, maybe have not had the biblical background for it. Some of you who are Christ followers have not yet come to this point and I want to encourage you, it's another significant step and sets of steps. And so we're going to walk through it. I want to read these verses to you in whole, and then we're going to go back up through and unpack them at a much more slow pace so that we can understand what God is calling us to, challenging us with, and allowing us to become. So let's go. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, there, and, and, and for this day, I'm, I'm reading this out of the New King James Version uh, that's on the screen here today. There are a variety of versions. I just like the language of this one best, and so I'm, I'm reading it out of that. So here we go. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I, I, I'll get back to that, but watch this. He's talking to those brothers and sisters, those in Christ, those who are Christ followers. I beseech you, watch this that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now we're going to go back to that first verse and, and just break it down a little bit. And let me just make sure we see who this is, to whom this is addressed. And, and let me just say this. If you have not yet made a commitment to Christ, if you have not yet asked Jesus to forgive you your sins and to come into your life as your Savior and your Lord, obviously we talk about that quite a bit and I want to highly recommend that you do that and and I'm not going to pause at this point just to do that as a prayer time but but please talk to Pastor Brian, Pastor Tom, me and, and another believer and help us or just you yourself come to the Father and say I've sinned, I agree with you, I ask you to forgive me, I receive your forgiveness and become a follower of Christ this he's talking to people who've been there, done that. This he's talking to people who have made that commitment. They are followers of Christ. They are brothers and sisters. They're in the family. Doesn't use that, doesn't use that phrase lightly. They're part of the connection, and they have received the mercies of God. When you see this in the Bible, this word therefore or wherefore, you need to think about what it's there for. Some of you were dozing. You got that. Okay. What this is there for, Romans chapter 1 up through chapter 11 has been talking to us about our standing in Christ, been talking to us that we're not saved by rule keeping, but we're saved by receiving Christ and his work in our lives. Therefore, because you know this, because you have this foundation, because you have this good standing of being in Christ, therefore, I beseech you, therefore. So, I want to say to all of us who are Christ followers, this is it. This is good. What's now what he's saying? He's going to talk to us, and I'm going to label this, this, this verse as consecration. We consecrate. Watch this. I, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Let me just go back to that. That you present. You make a present of yourself. You give yourself to God. You consecrate yourself to God. You say, God, here I am. I'm all in. I'm all yours. I'm, I'm all in. I've consecrated to you. I'm given to you. Now watch this. I'm going to get in deep weeds for about two and a half minutes. Can you handle that much? In the original Greek language in which this was written, this is called the aorist tense verb. That helped you a lot, right? What the aorist tense verb is means that it is a completed action. It is something you do. You don't just take this in tiny bite-sized chunks increments. You do this. This is completed action. So you make a present of yourself. You, as a Christ follower, say, God, I give you me, all of me. I'm all in. God, I make a present of myself. It's a conscious, deliberate decision. Watch this. Make a pre present your bodies. So, so you're saying right away, uh, well, what's that mean? Uh, so it, that doesn't include my mind? That doesn't include my spirit? Oh, yeah. Basically, it is you present your whole selves. You give everything about you. But understand this. There was, there was in Paul's day when he's writing to the Romans, and it still exists to somewhat today, there was a false doctrine called Gnosticism. You can't spell it because um, it starts with a G. But I'm just saying it's Gnosticism. And, and basically what that says was that the spirit and the body are separated. So it's that whole idea that what my body does is completely disconnected from my spirit. And I really did a horrible thing, but I felt good about it, so I'm good. Now, I've just summarized that sort of doctrine, but that's really kind of what it's all about, is that you can do evil, but, you know, my heart, we still use the phrase at times, the, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. You heard that one? You used that one? <laughs> and, and, and basically, he's wanting to say, no, 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 no. You, you need to have your whole self into this. So you need to not just, you have your spirit into this, you have your mind into this, you have your manners into this, you have your behaviors into this, you have, you, you give your whole self away to God. And he's also using the imagery of the Old Testament sacrifice. Watch this, that you present, you make this commitment, consecration, your whole selves, a living sacrifice. Oh, that would be different. 
especially to his audience, they were not used to a living sacrifice. They were used to, you, you led, you took the best lamb out of your flock, for instance, or the best heifer or the best bull out of your flock, and you had a rope or a halter, and you took that up to the priest, and you handed it off, and being a priest in those days was a very bloody business, and, and that priest would take this and butcher it and burn it up, crisp, gone, done, sacrifice, over. This was a metaphor and a symbol of the fact that Jesus would give himself as a sacrifice for us. But I'm just saying, that sacrifice was not a living sacrifice, dead, very dead. Very, no, 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 you said it's different for you. I want you... On the one hand, the Bible uses that imagery that we die to ourselves, we die to sin, but we live to God. We are a living sacrifice. So watch this. I told you this was, in the aorist tense, a, a, a completed action, but a living sacrifice is an ongoing process. So the question comes up, theologians debate it, is the work of consecration and God's sanctification in our life, is that a one-time big event? or is it an incremental process? And the answer is resoundingly yes. It is starts, it is an initial start. You, you make a conscious decision to say, God, I'm all in, I give myself to you. But you, it's not a one-time event where you go up and hand off. It is a, instead of taking this to the altar, God, I give you the lead rope. And, and I'm not just trying to cowboy this up. I'm, I'm, I'm saying literally in their imagery, they would have got this on the sacrifice. Lord, I give you the lead rope. It is not a sacrifice to take and offer butcher on an altar. I would give you the lead rope of my life. Huh. How about that? I give you this, this living sacrifice. I'm, I'm yours. Watch this. Holy, because you have been involved in the kingdom of God, you couldn't give yourself to God as a unforgiven sinner that's not acceptable to a holy God. But now, holy God has, and oh, by the way, you know why you can give yourself as a holy sacrifice? Because he made you holy. You're not that good. Smile. You're just not that good. You can't go to an absolutely perfect holy God and say, here I am, God, uh, <laughs> I'm holy. God says, whatever. No, 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 no. But he has made us holy through the blood of Jesus Christ so we can offer him a holy, and which means that's acceptable to God. This holy God says, yes, you can give yourself to me now because I have washed you, I've cleansed you, I have baptized you, you are raised to life again. I have made you holy, and therefore I will receive what you give to me which is your reasonable service. Oh boy, here we go. This, is, this word, it's translated in, in a variety of ways, which is the spiritual act of worship, which is your reasoned, intentional worship. It is one of those, it comes from one of those Greek words that doesn't have an exact English equivalent and you just can't get there from here. Because it involves reasoned, logical, and it involves spiritual, it's back to you give your whole body, your whole self. He, he, later we're going to talk about mind. He, he says to us, this is your intentional, thoughtful act of spiritual worship. I think that's the best translation. This is your intentional, thoughtful action of spiritual worship. So it's not just emotional, although it involves that. It's not just spiritual, although it involves that. And it's not just rational, logical, although it involves that. It's all of that. To say on purpose, intentionally, with my eyes open and my brain engaged, I'm giving my whole self to God. And God says, yeah. Wow. How about that? So we are a living sacrifice. Now let me cowboy this up a bit. I'm going to tell you about something you can't really describe. Pastor Tom now owns a horse that I had for many, many years called Chief. And a uh, good horse. I got him fairly young and, and smart horse and one of the best cow horses I've ever had. And I'd ridden him a few times, but when I owned him, somehow he figured it out. 
And I, I wrote him one day, and a day or two later got on him, and I figured out when I'd start to ask him to do something, he was already doing it. He was smart enough to say, well, if this is the guy, I need to figure out what he does. And I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> I mean, I, he knew my body cues before my body cues. You know, I was, I was thinking I was going to cue him, but he already knew he's going to ask me to do this, so he started doing it. Good horse, right? You, you got that right away? And, and he was a good horse. He, 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 he was he's horribly rough. <laughs> He just doesn't have a smooth gait in him. But other than that, he's just an amazing good horse. And, 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 but, but here's something I can't quite describe. I owned him. I'm telling you, he did all this for me, technically correct. But several weeks, maybe two, three months in, I'd saddled him one morning, was, was getting over, a neighbor had some other bulls in the pasture, and we were going to go sort bulls that day. And, and so I've done everything in a hurry, like, duh. And, and saddled him up, jumped on him, and we're going over there, and for some reason, I figured out that day, he just made that decision, whatever you're in for, partner, I'm in. We're, we're partners, we're doing this together. We're, and by the way, he was brilliant that day. Wow, he was good. Uh, and every day after that for me, he, 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 he crossed from I'm following your cues and doing what you ask to just let me know what we're doing and I'm all in. I can't describe that to you exactly because he didn't use actual vocabulary so he didn't say that to me but he said that to me and if you're really a horseman horsewoman you know you, you know that feeling of whatever you're doing I'm all in. I'm there. It's that thing, ladies and gentlemen, with the Almighty God, to say, okay, God, I consciously, deliberately make a present of myself to you. I've, I've, I've heard it said and repeated it this way. There's a point where you say the big yes to God, followed by a whole string of little yeses. You're a living sacrifice. That makes sense? There's a point at which, I remember I struggled with this, because I have been labeled certain terms, including strong-willed and stubborn and other, they're totally erroneous, but, uh, uh, but anyway, I've been labeled that by people. And so I had asked God for forgiveness. I'd received Jesus Christ as my savior. I wanted to go to heaven. I didn't want to go to hell. I'm in, but I still want to say, Right? I still want to say, yeah, but like, I'm not handing you the car keys. I'm not giving you the lead rope. I, you know, I'm in with certain reservations. I want to be able to veto some stuff. Hello? Anybody? You don't have to raise a hand. But come on, you felt that way. Maybe still do. And there came a day when I said, nope, I'm all in. I'm in. To know your will is to do your will. I'm in. I'm committed. I'm consecrated. I'm yielded. I'm surrendered. I hand over the lead rope of my life to you, God, and I'll do my best to follow you. You tell me where to go, I'm going. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> don't let me confuse you with thinking I'm perfect. Because I'm not looking at perfect people and I'm not one of them either. Because there are times that I've said, no, seriously, man? No, 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 no. No, you can't be asking me to do that. Uh-uh, no, 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 that doesn't make any sense at all. And sometimes I've said, no, that was just a bad idea. But if I know it's God's idea, I'm in. When it was first mentioned to me to help start a cowboy church, I thought it was a really dumb idea. Nah, that's good for other people. I'll be a cheerleader. I'm too old. <laughs> All of that's true. But, but it became clear that it was God's idea. Does that make sense? Wow, that was a good idea. That was a really good idea. I love what God does. Are, are, are you with me? I'm just saying that's just a, that's just a, a tiny little step. But, but consecrate yourself. All right, let's move to something else. 
this one talks briefly about separation. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on it, but we do. what's this? Do not be conformed to this world. Pause there. Don't be conformed. The Phillips translation of the, of the Bible has it this way. No longer be squeezed into the mold of this world. And it's a good translation. Don't be conformed. Don't be squeezed into the mold. Don't fit into the mindset of this world. He's not talking about the physical world. He's not talking about planet Earth. He's talking about the dynamic, the mindset, the worldview. Don't be... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I know my audience is pretty good, but don't be woke. <laughs> That's sort of the spirit of this world today. I knew I was... I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that was easy. But, 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 ladies and gentlemen, there are many, many other things that are just as dangerous and just as insidious to us as being woke. Right? Don't be squeezed into the mold of the world saying, well, I have to have one of those. I have to have more of that. I have to have this. I have to go there. I have to be that. Hello? Are you with me? Don't, don't be squeezed into the mold of the world and say, well, if this doesn't work, then my life's just a shambles. If I don't get that, then I'm, a disappoint I'm disappointed and depressed. If I don't, don't go into the mindset of the world. Don't be squeezed into the thinking of the world. Don't be squeezed into the fact that the world is saying this, I have to go along. We, we, we label it all kinds of things, peer pressure. We, we label it, oh, oh, but, but he's saying, I want you to be completely given to God as a living sacrifice. Don't be squeezed into the mold of this world. So that's, that was consecration, or separation. Now watch transformation. But be transformed. Oh, wait a minute. I told you verb form, aorist tense is a completed action, but be, uh, that's a different verb form. That is, it could equally be translated, but be being transformed. This is an, this is an action that had a beginning, of course, but it's an ongoing process as well. Because God is saying, I want to transform, oh, and that word transform, is a word you would recognize. It comes from the, from the Greek metamorphi. Huh, you ever studied butterflies? This is a metamorphosis. This is a change, literally it is a change of form from within. So God is saying, don't be squeezed into the mold of this world where you are conformed from the outside in, but I want you to be transformed from the inside out. Does that make sense? God is saying to us, I want you to be made new. I want you not to fit the mindset and the mind mold of this world. I want you to fit my mindset of um, the mindset of heaven. And I'm, in order to do that, you need to be being transformed, metamorphi. You need to be being made new from the inside out. By the way, just pause a moment and say in your heart, thank you, God, that you can make me new from the inside out. You understand, this is the whole difference between God and other people working on you. When other people, parents, teachers, psychologists, counselors, pastors, <laughs> when other people work on you, it's from the outside in. It's all we got. That makes sense? That's all we got. I can try to feed you new information. I can try to persuade you. I can try to convince you. Marketers work on you from the outside in. Hello? When you try to influence someone else, you work from the outside in. That's all you got. God says, I work from the inside out. I will make you do See, understand, by the way, sometimes we humans get impatient with God's pace at this because we think people ought to be changing on the outside quicker than they, than they do. And God says, just, just give me time. Just give me time. It isn't that behavior will leak into their character. It is that their character will transform their behavior, which is a God thing. Hello? Cops work on outside in. I've been driving let me, let me rephrase this. I have read about people driving. 
and they see in their rearview mirror this dark foreboding vehicle with strange lights and will and instantly their right foot comes up and they slow down I've read about that <laughs> and, and what I've read is that when that car stays right there oh no for a while and then goes around like yes that was called behavior modification but it did nothing to my character because as soon as he's out of sight, <laughs> we're back on. Hello? We have some former state cops here, so I, 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 I got to be careful. I don't think any current, so uh, you, you see what I'm saying? But God says, I want to work on you from the inside out so that when nobody's around and looking, you'll still do the right thing. Amen? Transformation. I want you to have this metamorphosis. God says, I, if you give yourself wholly to me, I'll make you completely new from the inside out. I'll make you a new creation. I'll, I'll watch by the renewing of your mind. Ah, see, that way I'm going to change your thinking. I'm going to change your view. Don't be squeezed into the mold of this world, but be renewed by your mind. Watch this, so that you may prove. This is a demonstration, so that you may prove, demonstrate, test, discern, live out what is that good. Watch the growth in this. Good acceptable and perfect will of God. God is saying, you give yourself to me. By the way, here's the problem. Sometimes we, we, we are upside down and backwards on this passage. We want to say, I want to start doing the perfect will of God, and then I'm going to become a better person, and I'm going to be more godlike. How's that working out for you? Not. You're just not that good. Ser Right? I mean, you can straighten up a little bit. You can be better than what you are just all by yourself, probably. But, but to please an absolutely perfect holy God, God says you need to have me working on you from the inside out. I will clean your heart. I will change you from the inside out. I will redirect your thinking so that you are not squeezed into the mold of this world, but I've transformed you so you have a metamorphosis and you can live out, demonstrate the will of of God in your life. There's nobody in this room that's done with this yet. I'm certainly not. There's nobody in this room that does this perfectly yet. There's nobody in this room that would say, in the backdrop of an absolutely perfect God, I live a perfect life. I, if you do, uh, I've got a general word for you. You're wrong. You're not that good. But God is saying, we're getting there from the inside out. I'm transforming you. I want to be yours. So here's the question, ladies and gentlemen. Are you all in? Have you come to a, a point as a Christ follower where you say, I'm a living sacrifice. I hand you the lead rope and I'm all in. I'm all yours. Lead me where you want me to go. I'll follow. Stop me. Back me up. I'll do that. I hand you the lead rope of my life and say I'm all in. Are you there? I want to lead you in a prayer for that. Then we're going to go into baptism. Let's pray. Holy Father, it is in Jesus' name and the power of the Holy Spirit that we're grateful for your word. And right now, today, God, we make a present of ourselves. We give ourselves to you. That includes our bodies, our minds, our spirit, our will, our future, our present, our behaviors. We give it all to you, God the whole package. We just hand it off to you to say, here, God, I belong to you. We would ask that you help us not to anymore be squeezed into the mold of this world, not to be conformed. We would ask, God, that you help us then to receive from you 
by the power of your Holy Spirit, your transforming power on the inside to bring new life to us. And then, God, you're going to help us to let that new mindset, that new worldview, that new heart start to demonstrate who you are in our lives. We pray this in the power and the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, Father, we're going into a celebration of baptism, and for that we're so grateful. Make this a holy time for all of us. Remind us that we are buried with Christ, that we might be raised with Christ. Remind us, Lord, that you have washed us and made us holy. That we are an offering that is holy and acceptable in your sight. We pray you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to go into baptism, and uh, you are welcome if you need to, to leave. That's fine. This won't take a long time, but it's a high and holy time, and we encourage you to watch the video. So my name is Angie Sogo, and I accepted God as my Savior. Truly, I believe, as a child. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son. Take a person like me at my age want to be baptized. I thought a lot, a lot about my testimony today, and I decided God worked really hard on me. So I see it only fit that I tell you our story of what brought me here today. We all have, as Pastor Isaac's grandson would say, prayer warriors in our lives. My Grammy, my aunts, and my friends are prayer warriors in my life. They kept Bibles on their table at all times and they talked about their relationship with God and how they talked with God. I kept thinking, I must be missing something. Um, I must not be ready because God is not talking to me. I kept thinking, I don't have a relationship with God, at least not like they do. What I didn't realize is God was there all along, every step of the way. At every Bible camp, God was pulling at me all the time. Uh, so, you know, years later, my 20-year marriage ended and came to a church in Alzada, Montana. Ladies Bible study group there um, came into my life. Little did I know that they would become lifelong friends of mine. They didn't care the questions that I asked. They were, they, I felt they were stupid questions, but they weren't. They, they taught me more things. We would start from the beginning of the Bible. We'd be then at the end of the Bible, at the end of the session of our Bible study group. It was the most awesome thing I could ever imagine that Bible study group. In fact, there are people here today at my baptism from that Bible study group from many years ago. I ended up getting divorced, and I moved away from that little El Zeta church. I uh, had a friend that brought me ultimately brought me to that cowboy church that I kept seeing alongside the highway. And um, I walked into this cowboy church, and he said, don't worry, I'll introduce you to these people. I walked in, and I looked around, and the people that I had met the last 25 years of my life were in the cowboy church. They're here. Didn't know how to write this, whether I should write what I'm saying or about my medical issues, about my personal struggles. He's been there through that, and he's been there through all my happy times, too. Um, so, um, I'm grateful for my relationship with God. I want to walk with Him and I want to, I want to learn the Word better and listen better and walk better and live better with God. That's why I'm here today. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being here on this blessed day.